and sorry about the delay today. We're running a little slow here at our last beach monitoring event of the summer. Um, it has flown by, surprisingly, but we're here at Austin Estuary. It's a very muddy beach. I'm gonna flip the camera around to give you a little peek while folks tune in. Here we go. It's a beautiful mud flat here. This site is a lot different than most of our other sites. Austin Estuary is indeed a mud flat, and part of that is due to Donkey Creek that comes out here and all that fine sediment gets washed out. There's not a lot of water flow either to move that sediment away in the harbor, and so we get stuck with this beautiful, wondrous, magical mud. And so this is one of our sites that we started monitoring in response to the daylighting of the creek here at Austin Estuary. So there used to be a culvert or a big pipe that ran underneath the ground here. You can see stuff kind of <laughs> wobbling around in this gooey, ooey mud. Uh, but that culvert used to um, run here. And so by daylighting the creek, that pipe was removed to allow a more natural flow of the creek. Um, and we get to see how this space changes over time. Now, for those of you just tuning in, if you're, if you could tell us where you're tuning in from and who you're tuning in with, uh, we're here at Austin Estuary Park, and Mike is walking by with a hundred meter meter tape headed out towards the water. This line that we're setting is called the profile line, and it's the line we come back to every summer for this site. Um, all our other sites we do this in the summer and winter, but we decided it is just too dangerous <laughs> and dark to do this in the winter time. Um, so Mike's headed out to the water's edge and we'll do some surveys along this line, which include um, a presence absence survey, which we've featured before, and we'll probably be, we'll catch a little bit of that today. There's also some quadrat surveys where we're looking at the presence of life at different tidal heights from the plus five, plus one, zero, and minus one. And we also look at the slope of the beach. Um, that's part of what makes this site almost impossible to do in the winter time, because we use the big stadia rod that Josie's holding over here. Josie, can you show off our big ruler? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. That thing extends to about 15 feet tall, maybe 16, I don't remember. Um, and we can use the level that's getting set up between his OG and Steph over there to zoom out along every three meters on this line and see how that slope changes. And when you're about where Mike is at the beach, that flashlight just doesn't, doesn't do that justice. And so uh, doing this site in the winter time just really doesn't work out well. So it's, this is our one time for the summer. Mike's straightening out that line. We have Josie up here holding it tight. Mike's getting that out there. And from this line, we can now do all the different surveys that Harbor Wild Watch does through our beach monitoring program, which is uh, has protocols adapted from the WSU Beach Watchers. Um, so pretty cool group doing cool science, which lets us do really cool science and allows us to have a pretty sound wide view of what's happening uh, at Puget Sound beaches. So with that, <laughs> um, we're already getting stuck in the mud. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeehaw, it's gonna be an adventure today. But um, we're gonna get started with a presence absence survey um, while we get kind of that level set up. So we'll join, have you join in on that. Um, we have the presence absence data board. Now for some beaches, like the beach we did yesterday, we do about, I don't know, 15 or 16 of these squares of data. For this beach, it is a long beach where we actually have to tie meter tapes together to get it done. So we have this page, this page, and then we have a third extra page. So <laughs> we're ready to record lots of information about what's happening at Austin Estuary today. So I'm gonna turn this over. Zoji, are you okay with recording while I okay, yeah. go live? Um, sorry about that. All right, so from our top mark, um, here's our lovely PVC pole, which we come back to every every summer. 
we are gonna be between the zero and the three meters. It looks like Kazoji's standing at the three. And within this lovely, we're gonna imagine a big rectangle. And we're gonna shout out things that we notice. So it can be evidence of life, as well as living things. Um, the substrate's important here as well, because you can see, um, especially with the daylighting of the creek here, we've noticed over time, this muddy substrate has actually become a little bit more cobbly and gravelly. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing we've noticed. And what we'll start doing is hollering out to Hazoji things like brown algae, and it's attached. Steph found some isopods. Yeah, or an amphipod? No, I Oh, and isopods. Yeah. So amphipods are, are little beach hoppers. Um, and they you commonly see those bouncing around in the sand at a rocky beach. Um, they have many different types of legs. So ampha is different and pod is legs. Isopods, iso means the same, pod is legs. So their legs are all um, kind of the same. <laughs> um, and they're the, the roly polies. Ashley had some barnacles. And then I'm gonna borrow your rock so I can Look at those teeny tiny checkered periwinkles. We get a look at what's going on. So we uh, often have a saying during beach monitoring that all you need is a good rock and sometimes you can find all the representatives of a species within one, one little rock. So that's a nice looking snail. Perfect. So we have snails, amphipods, barnacles, isopods, brown algae. I see red algae and green algae <laughs> all attached. Um, is this sand or clay? And then, yeah, so we'll call it sand and silt because there's kind of, you can see really, let me get my hand in there. And is that? It is <laughs> gnarly. Um, and you can just click it. Um, oh, what is this grass? I don't think we have a plant category. Um, we do have a tree category. Eel yeah, yeah. eel grass. Yeah, so that's not that. Um, and we do have some wood, woody debris like this. Kind of acts like a boulder in that it's space for lots of creatures to connect to. So you can see the rockweed, the brown algae, barnacles, probably some other stuff between here, but we already saw that on the rocks. So at this point, um, yeah, we'll mark things like sand, silt, tree, gravel, cobble. Um, I don't see any big boulders. And with that, we're gonna switch and do it all again. So between three and six meters, it's Groundhog's Day for us community scientists out here. Um, in the comments, you're welcome. Do you see any of the things we're looking for? What do you notice when we look closely at the beach? Barnacles. There's snails, barnacles. Brown, red, and green. <laughs> yeah. Did you say I have a clam shell. Here's more of those amphipods, isopods. Welcome to our friends from Florida. This beach is probably a little bit different than your lovely tropical Florida beach, but it certainly feels tropical here in Washington today. <laughs> um, it is hot. And then we have Kinsey and Josie over here. They're <laughs> waiting to get things ready for that uh, profile line where we measure along to get how our beach slope changes over time. Any other kind of shells besides clams? So here's that evidence of life of a clam shell snails, barnacles living on it. This is a good example of why we leave cool shells at the beach, because they end up being awesome habitat for lots of other things. They also break down and are kind of like the vitamins of the sea. So we leave shells on the beach. Um, and we're gonna scooch down to the next square. And I love this survey uh, because it really shows zonation on a beach. So. We can see from the top of the beach and every three meters as we go down, 
things start changing. So we'll see different life as we get closer to the water. And this survey records how the populations of things like seaweed shift from the green to the brown or the brown to green to red, back to brown again. Um, there's kind of some cool patterns we start noticing as we go along. Um, one thing at this beach that I've seen here and nowhere else are striped anemones. So as we get a little lower and on some of that woody debris, um, we'll see if we can show you one of those. And this, <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> even though it looks kind of brown and actually kind of green, this is red algae. <laughs> Not confusing at all. <laughs> um, we have Octavia tuning in from Montana. Excited to bring the salt water to a landlocked state. Uh, <laughs> snails, it gets, it depends on the species of snail, but there's definitely some moon snails that can live many, many years. Um, can almost use their shell to track how old they are, which is a pretty, pretty cool, cool thing. Um, oh, maybe I read that question wrong. Thanks, Rachel out there. Or just kidding, I think it's Carly. Carly's out here running tech. Thanks, Carly, for answering questions in the comments as we go along. We have a crab in our quadrat. So this looks to me like a perfect log to find that striped anemone. And indeed, I'm going to show this to our friends. This little blob here is a non-native anemone that we see at this beach called the striped anemone. Uh, I'm going to show it to these folks so y'all can kind of get that search image. It looks like a little squash almost with fancy lines. And also, <laughs> yeah, this is the treat for uh, being in the mud here at Austin Estuary. What's that? Flatworm? Uh, I think that might be a stretched out anemone. Yeah. Make your shape. <laughs> right? <laughs> Blob in. Um, so yeah, that is another anemone there. So kind of, I don't know why we see them a lot on this woody debris, but they seem like they like it. Um, kind of an interesting thing to notice. We have attached green, attached red, attached brown, and ooh, Ashley found a limpet. It's a new creature to add. They're the little cap-shaped snail here. Um, Rachel and I geek out over limpet faces. Uh, the keyhole limpets especially are big enough that when their little face pops out, you can see their eye spots and their antennas, and they are so cute. <laughs> awesome. All right, <laughs> you can really see <laughs> the mud here. Uh, there's a reason um, in non-COVID times, normally we only get about three or four volunteers on this beach, and it's usually me, Mike, and his children. Uh, Chris Gendry sometimes. Go for it. Okay, I'm gonna peek it. That should be good. So we have 165 meters worth of tape running along this beach uh, that we're gonna survey along. So we're gonna get our steps in today. Um, and they're up here setting up the level. We have a big tripod that puts the level, we put a level on that and that spins around at the same height so that we can record numbers off that ruler. <laughs> Um, ooh, Rachel's <laughs> out there predicting oh, that I'm going to fall. Rachel. Uh, the tide today is a negative one point something. Um, this beach here, we actually don't monitor the minus one tide. Well, we do that at other beaches. Um, and that's just because it's more mud. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can see Steph kind of stuck. That looks like unattached brown. Yeah, but we might have some attached brown somewhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> At some point, we'll uh, strategize our steps in the nice creek. Um, it makes some, for some nice gravel and a good rinse off. <laughs> but 
Uh, it's also kind of fun to see the anoxic black mud here. Um, this is the smelly enemy? stuff. Yeah, I do not. Pods. Am I still in air range though? Yeah. I'm just standing Yeah, in. perfect. Um, yeah. So. Find China. <laughs> Can we? I'm going to tire these shoes today. What just? <laughs> Give them a good rinse. Oh, uh, they're so green. We have the sea lettuce, which is kind of this leafy green, and then ulva intestinalis, which is a hollow tube of green. I think we can say attached green. Cool. And attached red. I don't know if you already got those. I'm distracted. <laughs> uh, ooh. Um, I think at least unattached brown. Say unattached brown. Awesome. Excited to Eleanor, age four or grade four. Didn't know about smelly mud, folks. I wonder, can you all describe what the mud, mud smells like? Anybody have a good? A light like fart. <laughs> Smells like a light, a light fart. Says Steph. <laughs> Lovely. <Not> too pungent. <laughs> uh, we also start seeing some of these burrows. So this is likely the hole from a shrimp. Uh, they tend to kind of excavate up. Clams we've seen kind of their holes more like flush with the ground. Um, oh. But because it's pretty disruptive for us to do a lot of digging. I think we're already disrupting the mud enough with our steps. We don't do any excavating out on the beaches. So unless we see a clam squirt or a shrimp pop out of the hole, um, we, we don't go digging too hard for those. Um, but we kind of keep them on our radar. Uh, so we definitely have some burrows. But I'll look for some amphipods and enemies. kind of fun um, as miserable as the mud sometimes is and as much as we really don't look forward to monitoring this beach it always ends up being like a little bit delightful um, we have some <laughs> hilarious photos of last summer with K Chris Gendry and Lucas Stratty they <laughs> and Mike did some epic beach monitoring yoga um, we'll post that soon Squishy. Yeah, and squishy then, blobs. Then We've got teeny tiny striped anemones on this stick. Good eye, Ashley. I think there's something ooh, <laughs> right in there, too. Oh, yeah, uh, it looks like an isopod. So, again, that roly poly. Also, some <laughs> old ceramics. <laughs> I wonder where that's from. We found some interesting things in the mud, um, including someone's Prius keys one year. So uh, if you're that person, I, I still have your keys. Let me know. Okay, moving on to our next section. Mm. <laughs> we, feel, we feel kind of like prehistoric, like we're playing extinction or something, like in the tar pits. <laughs> Alright, yeah. so here's a new creature to add to our list as we get lower in the tide. And that nice black shell bivalve. Yeah, yeah. Once you get here, we're just we're just gonna laugh at Steph while she <laughs> tries to make it. <laughs> Sorry, this is I can't I can't turn away. The people have to know. <laughs> I think if you can pop your heel up. Suffering for science. Suffering for science. <laughs> it's like eating me alive. If you get real stuck, um, some ways to get out of the mud if you're worried about the tide coming in and drowning. So far, we got some time, folks. We'll be okay. But um, 
some rescue strategies would be to actually get on your belly and crawl out of the mud. You're able to increase your surface area and where your foot dives in. <laughs> um, by, by laying on your belly, you can kind of army crawl out without those. <laughs> Nice, nice. 3.12, I write that under elevation change. Elevation, 3.12? Yeah, and you can use those whole squares. So now we're going to start having Mike yelling numbers at us. Um, <laughs> um, and so every three meters, you can see Josie and Kinsey are kind of working together while Mike uses that level. Um, the little thing on top of that tripod spins around and so he's using that to look at the ruler and read a measurement off um, and every three meters we're gonna get that measurement and it's a lot this is where you know geometry comes into play and we're actually kind of making a triangle out of the beach by that right angle of the top of the level to that from Mike to the level to the ruler and then we get to see how the angle of the beach changes by doing some subtraction and we'll notice as as our lovely community scientists here get lower down the beach those numbers are gonna get bigger and we can actually extend that ruler really really tall um, so that's pretty cool uh, for Octavia wondering Steph are you okay I'm good. Good. Solid. Solid in the ground. <laughs> Solid in the ground. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, I think if you can hike out there to this gravel, you'll be better. Um, excellent, excellent. So we are, again, still working our way, doing a presence absence survey. Oh my gosh. You can hear the delight and joy of our monitors today as we trudge through the mud <laughs> you did it. Really you it. <laughs> Kenzie, what are you at? I'm going to take a look at my shoes. <laughs> I do, yeah. Get that nice glorious mud here. Magical. Yeah. Um, it's kind of it's kind of a fun <laughs> a fun place to be on a Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go for a little bit longer, so if anyone else has any more questions, now would be a great time to ask them. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more helpful as we, you know, have a lot of, of these presence absence squares to get through today, um, as well as some quadrats, so we'll be counting the number of living things at the plus five tidal height, the zero and, my, and plus one tidal height today uh, for this beach. Um, so, um, looks like Mary, thank you for your donation. That's so sweet. We appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just out here doing some science. It's our last uh, beach monitoring event of the year. Um, they have flown by, and again, we've been pretty bummed not to be able to open this up to um, volunteers as well as just the public. This is a really fun public event that we normally would be doing, um, including all sorts of community scientists. Uh, we use that word because it's nice and inclusive. Um, citizen science is another term used to describe the data we're collecting. Um, it's a way to get <laughs> alarm went off for the minus or the zero tidal height, so we'll go put that out there. But again, community science really just includes all of your observations and our observations here today um, and it's kind of an amazing effort uh, depending on what you're interested in um, there's probably a community science endeavor for it so if you want to learn more about birds there's all sorts of awesome bird community science amphibians you got it weather i'm sure it's out there so do some googling and find yourself a community science project that's uh, you can get involved with and help better inform our scientific inquiries out there. Um, we did a sea star wasting survey the other, other day, and that's a great example of how there's so much area of beach that scientists really can't look at all the sea stars along all the western coastline of the U.S. And so by having community science out, scientists out there, 
um, scientists can get a better idea of the recovery of those sea stars as well as their status. So really kind of fun stuff and um, <laughs> we're excited to include you um, once it's safe to do so. But for all of the you who have tuned in over the last month, two months, uh, we really appreciate your support and viewership. Um, if you're welcome to <laughs> share these videos with your friends, uh, that's a fun, easy, free way to support Harbor Wild Watch, like our social media pages, all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> as you can see here, there's a donation link if you want to make a monetary donation. Granted, we understand that it's weird times right now, so no worries if that's not possible. Um, another way to support Harbor Wild Watch is to become a Steward Club member. Thanks, Jen, for the donation. That's so sweet. <laughs> we appreciate it so much. Um, and our Steward Club members, we appreciate you out there too. Um, you get fun, free, exclusive content um, in addition to uh, our Cocktails and Fishtails program, which has gone all online. So really anyone's welcome to join those at this point. Um, but we, we look forward to growing that membership um, despite the weird times. <laughs> we really, really appreciate that so much and uh, look forward to making all sorts of exciting digital content as the summer goes on. I know we have some fun Lopez footage to show you, definitely more videos from Tongue Point. So we'll be out exploring the low tides. You're welcome to check out a tide chart and find some low tides of your own. And um, yeah, we just, Appreciate you all out there so much and are, are happy that we can include you at Austin Estuary today. Um, so yes, you get to stay nice and mud free while we uh, do some trudging here and <laughs> it's exciting stuff. <laughs> but um, thanks again for watching and feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get updates on new content. So thanks again and we're signing out. <laughs> Happy